I kind of want to talk about people's reactions to this. Um, because Rakeda wasn't just some guy. It's not like Boss Man Jack going to, to jail for crack. You know, we're only like a couple retards like me. Give a shit. Uh, Nick, it's, it's, I think I've said this multiple times now, like just in the last month, but it is staggering. It is staggering to think about how much money he was making, how well known he was. He was making appearances in, in, you know, documentaries for Netflix, and he had a hundred thousand people watching concurrently for the Johnny Depp trial. He was making so much money at one point he wouldn't even acknowledge super chats that were less than twenty dollars. Uh, he was the top super chat earner, in I think the entire world, if not just the United States. Um, he was beating out the fucking VTubers in terms of super chat income. Like he was at the very, very top of YouTube in terms of live streaming. And um, he basically invented the concept of law tube, um, which he was very make smug about. That's why he called himself the law pope, <laughs> to try and piss off uh, Pope Hat, the, um, who was a legal commentary guy. But he really, I mean, he, he, he found a niche. And, it, and he came from such humble origins, too, where it's like, to begin with, he... Um, Gave he called into the Dick Show to 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 talk about um the the wool suit with Maddox, and then he um started doing his own streams with alumni from the Dick Show like Sriracha, talking about Russell Greer. I started showing up on his podcast because he he wanted more. He wanted to talk about low cows and stuff and litigation like that, and then um he ended up doing more serious streams about Rittenhouse and stuff. And it's just like it was just like a perfect natural progression. Um, a, a nice mix of information, entertainment, and every. I think people feel like they're learning something because the legal system is like a complicated machine that not many people really understand. So you can kind of excuse, you know, listening to a guy ra drink and ramble about Russell Greer when it kind of feels like you're learning something in the process of of it um, and understanding how your government works a little bit better. It was just um, you couldn't really ask for a better. I better hit off, right? Jim uh, made fun of him and he says, Heter and by the way, this is probably the single most base take that Dear Medicare has ever made. He says, heterosexual Christian man watches one episode of anime and now he's going to prison. Just one episode of Sailor Moon was all it took. If you see something, say something. Anime is a gateway drug. So true. So true. I've warned people of this for many years. And Jim, finally, he, this is like a deathbed conversion. This is like a deathbed confession. Look, I've known this entire time that this Japanese cartoon shit is, is cancer for the soul. It's junk food for the mind. And now I can finally say it. Now that I'm free, I can finally admit this, this terrible curse. <laughs> Uh, very tragic. This was one of his early streams that um, people gave him a lot of shit for. I can't remember what it was that prompted him to do this. I think it was like a 100,000 subscriber special. Um, but he's in... I think he's in the, the kids' playroom surrounded by toys watching anime. And I think at one point in the stream, his son walks in. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, I'm, uh, and I'm kawaii. <laughs> Um, uh, I think people just kind of look past this cause it's like a, a silly thing, I guess, but I don't know. It's the stain has never gone away. The anime stream was a real, we all saw it. Uh, we can't unsee it. Um, this is Megan Fox, not that one, uh, who is a late, I guess you could call it late stage Rakeda, um, friend, like Rakeda only maintained a couple of friendships towards the end of the spiral, um, before he got arrested. And Megan Fox happened to be this one of the wine, I, I would call her like a wine aunt. She's like a wine aunt from the locals chat that was hanging out with uh, Rakeda for a while and showing up on his streams just so that he could get like a woman on screen for his for his audience, which was like brain damage at that point. Um, but she blames us, I think. Let's take a listen. He's he's dying in front of our eyes. Like, like also, anybody that denies that shit. His soul, his spirit is dying too. And I, the last couple of times that I've been on with him has been really difficult for me and I love him. And it's been difficult because he's not there. And I know he's not there and everybody knows he's not there. And it's been really hard. Um, it's just, I, when, I, when I first met Nick, 
it was right during it was during the Johnny Depp trial and I did a stream with him he invited me on and we had such an instant connection it was always familial it always bro he has a wife I know it may not seem like it but like come on if you're white if a, a woman if a woman is publicly saying I feel like an instant connection to you and your wife doesn't immediately shut that shit down and say like you're not talking to that woman again she doesn't love you <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't give a fuck about you. She doesn't give a fuck about your relationship. You need a little bit of jealousy there to filter this shit out. This felt really familial to me with him. I felt instantly connected to him through... He had such joy in his eyes, light in his eyes, you know? Um, and he was such a light person. And he was um, so generous, so kind, so... He's still alive. He's still alive, lady. He's just in jail. <laughs> She's talking about him like how one talks about like your dead dog. Scruffy was such a good pooch. He was always ready to play. He had that light in his eyes. He was always ready to go out for a walk. You walk into the room and it just lights up because of, of Scruffy. Scruffy was with, with Beth's dog. I was like, Scruffy's outside, bro. He's just at the vet. I'm with his platform so full of joy. And, um... What has happened to him over the last few years has just been so hard to watch. And, you know, those of you out there, I just want to say, who are like, oh, we tried to tell you. And we've been watching. We, it, we're not stupid. We've seen the same things that you've seen. But there are channels out there and people out there who have been rooting for this very thing. They wanted this to happen. and they Raise your hand by typing O forward slash if that's family. you. They want him, they want to drive him down a road to hurt himself. Those Kiwi farms and all that shit. It's not about, <laughs> they're not worried for him. It's about entertainment to them. There's an entire, there's an entire thing out there, entire like entertainment sphere around making content out of his downfall. And yeah. that's disgusting. It's no. as disgusting as as doing what is happening to his kids. It's just as bad. No, it's really not. Um, what a fucking cope. What a stupid bitch. Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? What a stupid bitch. Uh, so first of all, mistreating your children, driving them drunk, leaving cocaine and, and firearms around them in the open uh, is child endangerment. Um, that's a crime. Most people believe that that's bad. Um, making fun of him for doing that is not a crime. It's not child endangerment. And in a perfect world, it would wake him up <laughs> to the stupidity and profound stupidity of his of his actions. But uh, we do not live in a perfect world. And Ricardo will do whatever the fuck he wants because he's an adult man. And nobody can really persuade him otherwise. Um, which is not to say that encouraging him to go down is a good thing. I want to I want to point this out, by the way. Russell, I mentioned um, he got his start off of Maddox. Maddox's career um, suffered uh, horrifically. It's never recovered um, from the falling out with Dick and the things that Dick said about him. Um, Russell Greer hasn't made anything because he's like so, you know, <laughs> he says in his filings that he's so stressed out he doesn't make music or anything anymore. Kata made fun of them, too. Uh, Johnny Depp was going through a really nasty marital issue, and he went on stand and talked about uh, a woman shitting in his bed and stuff. And Nick made his career off of that. Um, I don't see... like is, is it just because that they're more famous? Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are much more famous and well paid than he is therefore their privacy matters less the sanctity of their relationship matters less the things that they go through are less you know important or or touchy i don't think so um i don't know how i don't, I don't know how people can make that kind of uh like cope in their head like D don't you understand how disgusting what you're doing is oh you mean the thing that he did for years that he made a million dollars off of? <laughs> that made, that got him put into the news? Um, no, I don't really think so, lady. Very bad take. Ethan Ralph, of course, has no such moral quandaries. He says, can't spin this one. Nick Ricada is fucked. 
How funny was that fart on stream now, Nick? Ralph Akur strikes again. In all honesty, we killed the beef and feel bad for them, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> no no such harboring he was on good terms with Rick he even says or uh, like I, oh I thought we squashed the beef I was gonna go show up on your stream just the other day but damn you fucked up boy I'm gonna roast your ass now should've been laughing at my farts bitch <laughs> uh, crazy wonderful thank you Ralph uh, he's he's selling pictures of uh, Nick Ricada's face um on t-shirts right now so maybe he'll make enough money that he can secure a loan to start his torta business in merida and then we can all go have tortas at the torta de la what's the what's the word for a pig how do you say pig monster in spanish torta de la pig monster we can all enjoy some margaritas together um that's Ralph. Ralph is happy. Of course, Ralph was uh, a friend of Rokita. Remember, remember his epic takedown of legal mindset, where he said, "Oh, legal mindset." That's my favorite Ralph like clip ever, <laughs> of like him trying to cut like a promo because he has no idea who legal mindset is, and he doesn't really care about Nick Rokita at all. But he's trying to make fun of legal mindset. He's just going, "Oh, legal mindset, legal mindset." Fuck you, bitch. Only legal anything that I care about is not going to jail, motherfucker. It's like the it's just awesome. It's just so fucking weak. It's like you pro it's literally like you ask an AI chatbot, like, please cut a promo promo about legal mindset for a WWE. <laughs> it's just like, okay, well, he does something related to the law, I guess. So the last remaining friend that Dick uh, that uh I already spoiled it, that Nick had for his uh his downward spiral. The last person willing to defend his honor as he chased off literally everybody around him over the over the months was Dick Herrera, Dick Herrera, Dax Herrera, Dick Masterson, Juju the Cow, a man who gets fucked in the ass while dressed as a cow. Uh, Dick, for whatever reason, continued to encourage Ricada to drink, letting people know that he's not Rick, Nick's father. He doesn't have to show any kind of remorse or, or concern for somebody that um, that he associates with basically just kept telling him, Hey buddy, drink, you're doing great. Your stand up is awesome. This direction you're taking in life is really cool. And I respect it to the point where after his massive blackout drunk stream, he posted this, Nick is letting his addiction ruin his life. And then there's a fat person on the computer. <laughs> you get it? Because he's implying that people who say that look like that. And obviously they're food addicts as well. So you're one to talk, owned. Uh, and then a mere less than 48 fucking hours later, um, they're in jail. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously. So then Dick decides to just turn on him and start making fun of him. You want to see what his friends think about him? There are the faces of, of, uh, oh, you can't see. How professional me. Here's, here's the pic. Here's the epic. Uh, sorry, I don't want to deprive you of the Juju the Cows, Daxi Pads, uh, epic own of all the haters that led to the, that was imminently before the arrest of Rikita, uh, Rikita. um, then, then we have this. This is their stream. They immediately booted up because they don't stream. They stream on a schedule like I do. So they started an emergency stream to try and capitalize on Nick Ricada's arrest as much as possible. Um, they managed to get like a thousand viewers, I think, were watching this live as Dick Masterson, a.k.a. Dax Herrera, a.k.a. Daxy Pad, a.k.a. Juju the Cow, a man who gets fucked in the ass while dressed as a cow, and Vito Giswaldi. A.K.A. Christopher Jeswalzi, A.K.A. Vito the Pedo, a man who is sexually attracted to children, who has admitted at multiple points in time that he is sexually attracted to children. They encouraged Nick Ricada to drink and drink and to pursue comedy as a career instead of continuing into his legal commentary. And as soon as he was arrested, literally within the hour that the news broke, they both decided fuck Nick Ricada, and they booted up. And he, D uh, Dick, left his like swinging party. Got into his car, called up Vito, says, you got to pull out of that kid. We're going We're going to do a stream today about Nick Ricada. We're going to roast him. And they meet up in his laundry room, which is where these sets are filmed. And they decide to laugh 
for for hours at somebody that they considered a friend like an hour ago. Because I mean, if he can't laugh at himself, then then come on. It's very sad. Uh, I hope. By the way, this is like the, like how many times has he done this? The only person that he hasn't tried to completely ruin is is Ralph. And I guess that Ralph has like blackmail on him. I don't or I don't know what the fuck he's waiting on. But yeah, everybody who's ever associated with him, I can't wait for Vito, man. I can't wait for Vito to get to to lose his usefulness and uh, for Dick to post all the embarrassing, terrible shit that he gets up to. That's gonna be great. I can't wait for Christopher Giswaldi to be cut into pieces by Dick Masterson with an axe. That'll be very satisfying. <laughs> 